Well, good morning and a happy new year to happy you. Happy new year. Yeah, yes. January 1st, 2024. Oof. We thank you for joining us. We're, My goodness, it's been so a crazy year. It's 2024 and I've obviously very interested in the movies coming out in 2024. Going to be some good ones, I'm the, sure. Yeah, exactly. We were just going over a list of things. Oh, I want to see that. I want to mm -hmm, see that. Mm -hmm. I want to see that. But before we get there, we thought maybe we should go back and look at 2023 one last time and go over the, the films that I actually published as my top 10 list of yeah. the films of the year. So, because it was a good year. We've got the expert, Sean McBride, the movie guy here, mm -hmm. of course. I don't know if he needs an introduction, but we'll <laughs> give him one anyway. And that's why we brought him on to give the top 10 of the year, because there were a lot of movies that were talked about. Some of them good, some of them... Oh, yeah. There was a bunch yeah, of them that so weren't much. so good. But, uh, but the yeah. ones that we found here, and I was I was pleased this year, because a lot of time when film critics make their top 10 lists, it tends to be like really esoteric stuff, like I was mm -hmm. talking with Angel on Friday, that these are movies that nobody's heard of. But this year, there I mean, half of these movies are things that played here that you could have yeah. seen that people were talking about. So I think it's a good year for both for art and for populist cinema. So these are going to be some that people might actually recognize and be like, oh yeah, I went and saw that instead exactly. of, wait, where was that one? Yeah, exactly. All right, so let's start at number 10. And here's one that you will have seen or had the chance to see anyway, and that is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Oh, yeah. Uh, part two of a trilogy of Spider-Man animated movies. I think this one is every bit as good as the first movie, which won the Academy Award. Uh, I think it's a great connector. I think it's got wonderful, you know, visual styles, and the acting was wonderful, and I like what it did with the story, kind of spinning it into a new direction. I was really excited to see part three. Part three, because the actor's strike doesn't have a date now. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to come out in March. I suspect it will come out in the fall. But uh, boy, I just thought this one worked very well. My favorite animated film of the year and my top 10 uh, film of the year as well. I was going to say, I remember talking about this you know, a couple months ago and how you were saying that the animation was just incredible yeah. to watch. And yeah. Very interesting. So that's number 10. Number nine on the list. Number nine, this is one that you probably will not have seen yet, but it's called Anatomy of a Fall. And it stars a, a German actress named uh, Sandra Hüller. And she has two great performances here. She is going to break out big time very soon. You'll start to see her in a lot of yeah. American language uh, things. This is a foreign language, part English, part French movie. It's the story of a woman, and uh, she doesn't get along with her husband, as we see in the first scene. Uh, the son goes on a walk. He happens to come back, and he finds his father dead at the uh, base of their, you know, their mountain chalet. Mm -hmm. Did he jump? Was it an accident or was he murdered? And Ooh. this becomes a courtroom drama where the French authorities really want to, you know, say that she's the killer here. Mm -hmm. And it, you're not quite sure what's really going on, and I appreciate that. Uh, it's a well-made, it's a genre film because mm -hmm. it's a courtroom drama. And so it's, you know, to some extent, it's not trying to do anything super artistically. But boy, the acting, and particularly from Sandra Huller, is really, really good. So, Anatomy of a Fall, part French, part English. So this is one that, folks, if you didn't see it, probably you really should, because yeah, it's very interesting. Exactly. All right, next up, this was a big one. Yeah, another populist one. This would be number, uh, where are we on, eight? John eight, Wick, yep. volume four. John Wick, I love these movies. I think I'm not alone in that assessment. John Wick, uh, you know, he, look, he's one, two, and three were great movies, and four continues the trend here. I think the fight choreography on these movies is just wonderful. I think the car chases are so much fun. I think Keanu Reeves is perfectly cast in this. What a wonderful franchise. Uh, let's hope that they keep making John Wick or John Wick spin-offs. They've tried to do a spin-off already mm -hmm. on TV. I'm not sure that one worked that, that well. Um, we won't spoil this, although you should know what happens in this movie <laughs> by the end by this time. But um, let's hope that they find a way to keep this franchise going. I, if I remember correctly, talking about this a couple months ago, whenever it came out mm -hmm. this year, Dan Gresham said, not the one. He hates these kinds of films because okay. it's just, you know, fighting, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. So. <laughs> Number seven, though? Number seven. This is a film that just came out recently. This is a drama. It's a melodrama from Todd uh, Haynes. It's uh, May, December. And this is the story of um, a, a, a woman. It's, she's kind of the Mary Kay Letourneau story where she was a 30-something-year-old woman who had an affair with a 13-year-old boy. Mm -hmm. Well, years passed. She's gone to prison. She's come out of prison. She's married this boy. They have kids together. And now they're going to make a movie. And so an actress, played by Natalie Portman, Julianne Moore is the other woman, uh, Natalie Portman comes into town. She wants to study this woman and uh, find out what makes her tick. And so it's the story of these two women kind of having a battle of wills because obviously the the woman at the center of the scandal wants to color it to make herself seem less evil, less, she's a pedophile, you know, stuff. Mm -hmm. And then the actress wants to get underneath her skin. Both women are kind of monsters in this. It's kind oh. of fascinating. It's a nice standoff. You don't see that often, exactly. yeah. Exactly. And then Charles Melton, who plays the, the kid, now grown man, 
Uh, he obviously has some scars that were never, you know, processed sure. and such. It's, there's a scene there where he's just watching a high school graduation. Uh, his, his kids, and he's going, I miss those moments from my childhood. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a gr three, three great performances. Yeah, this is, you know, I always like to do the top ten of the year because we get to look back and remember some of the ones that yeah. were, you know, And this good one's on Netflix, Netflix right now, so you can go see it uh, tonight if you there want. There you go. Okay, now there's no doubt that plenty of people saw the next one. Number six on the list. Number six is Oppenheimer, and I think at the end of the year, at the Oscar time, this is going to be your best picture winner. Yeah. I think Christopher Nolan will probably win best director as well. Um, and I do think it's a wonderful movie. I also think it's too long. I, I'll tell you right now, I think there's you could have cut a subplot with Florence Pugh, yeah. and this would have been a perfect movie. But I can't deny the visual images, the acting, the sound design, the music, the production. I mean, all of it just works perfectly. It's Christopher Nolan. I think he's finally made that movie that's going to mm -hmm. get him an Oscar. I think it's really, really well done. Oh, it'll be a good honor for him. Mm -hmm. And then moving on to, what are we at, five now? Number five, American five. Fiction. Uh, this is an interesting story, one that will get people talking. It's about, it's a story of a black author, and his books aren't getting any traction. And he notices this other, as Jeffrey Wright playing the author, he notices this other author, played by Issa Rae, and she has written kind of a black exploitation book, mm -hmm. and she's all the toast of the town. So in a fit of pique, he decides to write this film, this book that is black exploitation. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a genre that he loathes. And nevertheless, his book suddenly becomes the instant bestseller. Oh, and wow. the more he leans into stuff that he hates about, you know, black culture, the more successful it is. Mm -hmm. And so it's a sly, sly, very dark comedy here. I think great performances. Like I said, it will get you thinking. It's a story about culture and race and how we relate both extra within the races, but also mm -hmm. within the black race. I thought I thought it was really, really well done. Okay, and then now we are approaching, what is this, number four? N number four. Oh, I know this one. Uh, yes, uh, well, what is it? It's Barbie, Barbie. of yeah. course. <laughs> woo -woo. Uh, look, Barbie, uh, you and I were talking earlier that I, I think the thing that American cinema does best mm -hmm. are the genre pictures, the, the craftsmanship, not necessarily the high-minded art films, but Barbie is a nice melding of both. Craftsmanship, obviously on display here. I mean, yeah. the production design, you are living in a Barbie oh, world. Yeah. The acting, the music, the sound, just the feel of this movie. But at its heart, there's a lot of art on display mm -hmm. here as well. This is the film that, I, th I think I've told this story before, but I took my mother, who's British, and did not want to see this this populist, you know, mm -hmm. you know and, so, and she came out saying, oh, that was great, and became kind of an advocate, called up all of my nieces and nephews oh, saying, wow. oh, you need to see this movie. Yeah. It's like, way to go, Mom, way to buy in here. I, I just think this is a great, and I've seen this movie, this is the movie I've seen the most this year, Mostly because every time I get right. in the city with a niece, I was like, let's go see Barbie, Uncle Sean. It's like, okay, let's go do it. So. You kind of got to take them. Well, kind of fitting that both um, Oppenheimer and Barbie in the top ten. Barbenheimer. Barbenheimer, Plus, the crazy I know, I weekend. Moved, I almost moved uh, Oppenheimer up just so we could have Barbenheimer together. But, so. <laughs> that would have been good. Anyway, uh, number three. Uh, this, is, uh, this is another one of those films. It's part English, part Korean. And okay. this is called Past Lives. I think this is a wonderful film. Uh, it's a story Greta Lee stars as this woman. When she was 12, she emigrated from South Korea to go to Canada. She ends up in New York City. There was a boy she left behind that she had a crush on. She was a kid, right? Mm -hmm. 12 years pass, and she connects with him on Facebook or some social media, and um, sparks are still there. And so he finally comes to America to meet her, but by this time, she's married. And so she's oh. torn between this past love and what would have happened had she stayed in Korea mm -hmm. and her husband, who she obviously loves as well. And the husband and the, the guy also are part of this weird little triangle where, you know, the, the guy is there, but he's also got his life and he's not really ready to upend it, but he wants to know if there's still something there. But also the husband knows that his wife needs to process these feelings. And so I just think this is a really messy romance. It's very sweet. I like the way it ends quite a bit here. Um, an adult romance, because mm -hmm. it's not all, oh, everything has to end with a wedding. Yeah. It's, it's genuine issues of longing and you know, just trying to figure out, okay, did I make the right decision when I was younger? Yeah. This is a really good movie. Uh, this is my favorite foreign language film. Part of it's in English, a lot of it's in, in Korean. Which really has kind of taken off this year, I think, whenever it mm -hmm. comes to subtitles and getting involved in yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Make it a little bit easier this year. And then we're at number two. Number two. This is probably going to be the film that's most divisive on the list. This is called Poor Things. This is Yorgos Lanthimos, who is a Greek director. Uh, it's Emma Stone. She plays a woman, 
And so it's her in her adult body, mm -hmm. but she, her mentality is going to go from that of a toddler to a child to a teenager to a grown woman oh. over the course of this movie. Okay. And so it's a fabulous performance here. Um, I will tell you right now that, you know, when she gets to those teenage years, she is a very randy young woman. Mm -hmm. So it's got a lot of sex and a lot of nudity mm -hmm. in it, which is going to be the thing that a lot of people will um, sure. struggle with. But that being said... Boy, visually, this is amazing. It looks like a Frankenstein movie. There's yeah. certainly Frankenstein stuff going on there. But visually, the worldview, it reminds me of those old German Expressionism films. You, know, you, know, mm -hmm. you remember, of course, in the 1912s. Oh, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but I think it's just <laughs> visually stunning. I think the performances are great. I love what they have to say about the men in her life mm -hmm. and how they keep trying to control her. And she keeps, she doesn't understand why she would possibly let these guys tell her what to do. Yeah. Uh, great performances, both by the supporting actors, but also by her. She is... Probably still the leader for, you know, leading candidate for Best mm -hmm. Actress Oscar. I think we think that um, uh, Killers of Flower Moon is, is okay. overtaking her. But boy, a really good movie. Man, Emma Stone is great. Okay, yeah. and then number one. Yeah, here we go. We need another song. This is The Holdovers. Uh, the Holdovers is, I think, it's just a wonderful film. It's Paul Giamatti playing this curmudgeon of a professor at a boys' boarding school. And Christmas break is coming, and he's the one that has to stick around and take mm -hmm. care of any students that aren't going home for the holidays. It's the story of one student in particular whose mom says, look, I just got married. I need to spend time with my husband. So mm -hmm. she abandons her son for the holidays. So he's obviously feeling badly. And it's also the story of the woman, Devon Joy Randolph, who is the head of the cafeteria. It's set in the 70s and she has just lost her son in Vietnam. And so you have these three people who should be very caustic mm -hmm. and they don't get along together at all. But uh, they form a little family for the yeah. holidays. And I found that so sweet. Yeah. In a bickering, you know, we kind of are gonna argue all the way through this, but we obviously care for each other and willing to, you know, put life on the line, you know, mm -hmm. for this. Um, it's rated R. I don't think it should have been rated R. It's rated R for profanity. There's a lot of f okay. in it. Uh, this is, this actually feels like a PG, you know, that sweetness to it. Um, but I can say, there's, there's no, there's not sex or nudity or anything like mm -hmm. that. It's just the profanity that pushed it over the top. And I think some people will appreciate because that's how they would have been talking back then. But uh, like I say, I just thought this was a good spirit. I love the performances. Dave, I enjoy Randolph in particular has, you know, all the awards so far. She's been winning every supporting actress award. Yeah. Uh, so she's the leader for her Oscars. I think Paul Giamatti, who was famously snubbed for the Oscars, did not get a, a nod for Sideways. I think he's finally getting his chance to shine. I don't think he'll win, but I think he certainly deserves it here. And the kid is a kind of a breakout star here. Uh, you know, it's just a good performance from, like I say, a trio of really good actors. And I love that it was just a feel-good movie. I came yeah. out of that just smiling, going, oh, I want to watch that again, you know, so. Okay, well, that's Sean's top 10 for the year. <sighs> yeah. Be sure to keep an eye on that, of course, during award season and mm -hmm. see, I'm sure. There'll be plenty of them that there are taking home some awards. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sean. Okay. And, and Merry, uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you yes. as well.